I actually didn't even realize that's what it was until I looked in my manual. <laughs> it didn't hear from me. I don't use this at all. And it is very important that you have these in the right orientation or your chain will not turn out properly. Ask me how I know. And we wanna make sure we are only turning this the same way that your machine naturally turns it. See, it's not that scary. Hey friends and welcome back to Sewing From Scratch. I am Kate and this is where I teach you everything I know about sewing and we learn more together along the way. In today's video I am sharing all the parts of a serger. If that is interesting to you, make sure you stick around and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. I do just want to mention before we get started, I am going to be using my Singer Ultra Lock for this video, so obviously things are going to be specific to that. Your machine might look a little bit different, but it should have these main components with the exception of differ differential feed. Not all machines have that, but your manual will definitely tell you more about what's going on on your machine. Your manual is your best friend. If your machine is secondhand or didn't come with a manual for some reason, just Google the make and model of your machine followed by the word manual. Something should pop up. There's some wonderful resources out there and this machine that I have is quite old and I'm still able to find a manual for it online. So just try it and if not, reach out to somebody in a Facebook group, put it as, as a group post. Maybe somebody has the same machine and they have a manual that they could either send to you or photocopy. It didn't hear from me, but maybe you can get some help from somebody online. So let's just jump right into it. We're gonna start at the top of the machine with the threads and all that encompasses that. Right here is our spool holder. That is where you will put four or three of your spools of thread and then it will go up to the thread guide and come down into the tension discs. And beside these tension dials is also the pressure adjustment. This is for your presser foot. Honestly, I don't use this at all. I actually didn't even realize that's what it was until I looked in my manual. So. There's that. You also have your handle here, hanging out here for you to transport your machine. And the tension discs are what's going to open and close and be either tighter or not as tight, i.e. tension, on the thread as it's sewing. So from left to right here, we have left needle tension, right needle tension, your upper looper, and then your lower looper. And it is very important that you have these in the right orientation or your chain will not turn out properly. Ask me how I know. Once it leaves there, the needle threads go down into the needles, the guide for the needles, and the looper threads go down into the kind of the innards of the machine. And now if we open up the cover of the machine and we go inside, we're going to see all the moving parts that make the serger go. We're not really going to talk too much about these these exact notches and pieces and the and the pattern that they go in and the the path that they take and that kind of thing, but I did just want to point out the knives here. So there are two knives that work together to cut the fabric that comes into contact with them so that we can have a nice clean finished surged edge. And then you have your upper looper and your lower looper with work which work in conjunction with the two needles or one needle if you have a three thread machine to form the thread chain. This is the thread chain. Also inside your machine, or inside this machine anyway, is where my differential feed adjustment is. Now differential feed just means how much it's pushing or pulling the fabric through the machine. So this means you can gather fabric or you can stretch out fabric to make kind of like a lettuce hem. There's different things you can do with this, but for most purposes I kind of leave it alone unless my fabric is really different from something that I normally work with. Up top here on the throat plate we have our presser foot just like your regular sewing machine does and the presser foot lifter for this one is on the back of the machine. On the throat plate it also has a detachable portion so you can have a free arm meaning you can put a sleeve around there or a neck band or a hem something like that just like your regular sewing machine should have. Now if we move to the right side of the machine we're going to find the stitch length dial. This is going to determine how long your stitches are, how far apart they are. Underneath that is your hand wheel. Again, we want to make sure we are only turning this the same way that your machine naturally turns it. I do have a video all about things that I didn't know when I started sewing. Check that out just for some general good practices with sewing machines. And on top of all that, there are things that your regular sewing machine has as well, like the power switch, the power cord, the foot pedal, 
and a light. And that's really all there is to a serger. See, it's not that scary. If you are interested in more serger videos, I do have a couple that I will link down below for you, especially my number one video of what the heck is a serger. This video should also be helpful with that video. So thank you so much for watching and sticking around to the end of this video. If it was enjoyable and helpful for you, give me a big thumbs up so I know to make more content like this. If you have any content suggestions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below and hit that subscribe button. Thanks again, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.